Tarawa has a really interesting and varied geologic history. And in this project, you're going to learn all about it. First, I'm going to give you an overview of the region's geologic history, highlighting some of the major events. Then, we're going to go on a virtual field trip around the region where you'll get to see evidence of these events. You'll write a report on the field trip and tell me how these field trip locations tie into the geologic history of the region. Then, eventually, you'll go on your own actual field trip trip and tell me how that location fits into Ottawa's geologic history. So, as you know, the Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. The oldest rocks in our region are much younger than that, but still very old. They're from the Precambrian, about 1.2 to 1 billion years old. These rocks that make up the Gatineau Hills, like you see off in the distance behind me, they also make up the hills near, near Calabogie and Pakenham, uh, those two locations you might recognize because they're popular ski hills. And they can also be found in some exposed in some parts of Carp and Canada. These Precambrian rocks are actually all that's left behind from really old mountains that were once as tall as the Himalayas are today. These ancient mountains formed along the margin of ancient North America. They started out as sedimentary and sometimes igneous rocks, but they were deformed and metamorphosed and then cross-cut by magma when they collided with another continent. What's left behind is mostly metamorphic rock, nice, quartzite, and sometimes marble. The mountain building process stopped about a billion years ago. And since then, the mountains have just kept eroding down. All that's left behind are the hills like the ones you see behind me. The next major geologic event that happened in Ottawa's history was in the Paleozoic area, era in the Cambrian period, about 510 million years ago. A warm tropical sea flooded the region. Present-day Ottawa was a lot closer to the equator then. The region was actually a tropical beach, and the sand that was deposited then has undergone lithific lithification and is now a layer of sandstone known as the Nepean sandstone. It's actually the same rock that was used to build the parliament buildings. About 70 million years later, in the Ordovician, a deeper ocean covered this beach and limestones and shales were deposited. You'll still feel, find fossils of organisms that lived in that ocean in the limestones and shales around Ottawa. Sometimes trilobites, sometimes tiny little things that look like seashells. Um, they're good evidence that we were once underneath an ocean. Then, about 175 million years ago, in the Mesozoic era, the Jurassic period, there was some serious tectonic action here. A rift valley formed where the Ottawa River runs today. This means that there were two fault lines on either side of the valley, and the valley fell below. Hopefully, you remember that this kind of faulting results in what's called a graben. The graben, where the Ottawa River runs today, and where I'm standing right now, is called the Ottawa Bonshare Graben. It dropped below the hills on either side, so it fell below um, what's now the Gatineau Hills. Um, and today, the Gatineau Hills on the one side of the Graben are about 340 meters higher in elevation than the Ottawa River Valley. And the hills near Calabogie on the other side of the Gra uh, Graben are about 310 meters higher than the valley floor. And even though this is a failed rift valley, you can still sometimes feel the effects of those fault lines here. We do still have minor earthquakes here in Ottawa. Much, much more recently, in the Quaternary period, the entire planet was affected by an ice age and our region was under a huge ice sheet. The ice sheet advanced and retreated several times in the last 1.6 million years, but the most recent glaciation happened from 20,000 to 11,000 years ago. There's a lot of evidence of, that gla of the glaciation in this region. You can see some places where there are scrapes on the bedrock called striations, or places where the bedrock has been completely polished smooth by the glaciers. You'll see some places where the glaciers deposited large boulders that were tens or hundreds of kilometers away from the, where they originated. And then much of the sand and the gravel um, 
that's left behind in the region was deposited by these glaciers as well. As the glaciers retreated about 11,000 years ago, it took a while for the land to rebound, literally bounce back from the weight of the ice that sat on top of it. The land was so much lower that the Atlantic Ocean actually uh, flooded up the St. Lawrence and up the Ottawa River and carried, uh, covered the entire region in what is called the Champlain Sea. This sea left behind a layer of clay in many parts of the region called the Lita clay. And it's been pretty pro problematic as it's prone to landslides. Also, interestingly, and more on a biology note than a geology one, there were some saltwater fish that were left behind when the Champlain Sea retreated. If you ever make it up to Pink Lake in Gatineau Park, there are some salmon type fish that were once saltwater but have evolved to live in fresh water and they can now still be found in Pink Lake. Lastly, even now, our region is still changing. The Ottawa River is a good example. Sediment from upstream gets deposited where the river slows down, and over the centuries, the river will change, change its course a bit. Hey, so we're in the boulder field right below the Eagle's Nest Lookout. This location is just a few kilometers west of the small town of Calabogie. If you take a look at Google Maps, you see that we're actually a lot higher in elevation then we are in the Ottawa Valley. And the rocks around here um, are mainly this kind of pink and black uh, crystalline material, like you can see under Jason's feet. We'll take a good look, some close-ups of some of these rocks, and I'll make sure to bring a sample home. If you take a look at the top of this boulder, you can really see the striations are visible in the rock. This foliation is really apparent. You can also see there's sections that have larger crystals um, and different minerals in them and sections with small crystals too. So the foliation is really clearly visible in these rocks. So some of these boulders are really, really large. And you can probably tell that we're quite a ways from the actual cliff. So these boulders at some point have broken off the cliff and tumbled down the hill to rest where they are right now. We're still at the boulder field in Calabogie, but here we're at a different section. If you can tell, the boulders look really different at this section. Instead of being a smooth pinkish color, instead they're mostly white where they're not covered in moss. The rocks are very, very textured. There's intrusions of different, uh, what looks like quartz-like uh, rock that flows through them. And if I come in close and get a better look at the texture, you can see that it's really, really textured. It feels pretty sharp to the touch. There's lots of little pocket features on it. And it's quite unusual compared to the other boulders. On this stop on our virtual field trip, uh, we've come to part of the Green Belt right between Ottawa and Canada. You'll be able to find it on Google Maps by Googling for P6 and then look on the satellite imagery about 500 meters west of P6. There's the big open spot and if Jason turns the camera around you can see how much rock is exposed here. And this rock, when you take a good look at it, um, you can tell that it's really been uh, pushed clean by the glaciers. There's a lot of striations that all go uh, in the same direction. The rock has been polished pretty smooth. And I'm gonna collect a few samples of this. I don't know if Jason wants to get a look. So you can see exactly what kind of rock we're dealing with here. If you look around and you're really careful, you can kind of see there might even be remnants of ripple marks in the rock uh, left behind from when this rock, the sediments for it, were actually originally deposited. So this is just a little quick stop on our virtual field trip, checking out this kind of rock here in the Ottawa region. Hi there. For this stop in our virtual field trip, we're in the middle of the Ottawa River. I'm in my canoe uh, just outside of Morris Island Conservation Area. So here on the Ottawa River, you can tell things are pretty flat all the way around me. 
But if you look off in the distance to the east, you can see the Gano Hills. And what's really noticeable here is how much higher in elevation they are than the valley of the Ottawa River. They're so much higher, in fact, you can see that the weather is even controlled and a little different because of that elevation difference. Well, it's raining over there in the Gatineau Hills. Here in the Ottawa Valley, it's warm and sunny. <laughs> okay, so this is part B of our uh, Morris Island Conservation Area stop in the virtual field trip. Now, I'm probably about 20 kilometers away from Morris Island Conservation Area, near the small town of Pakenham. And you can see, if you look uh, around me in the nearby vicinity, it's really flat here. I'm still standing in the Ottawa Valley. But if you look in one direction, you see that there's a high escarpment of hills. They're several hundred meters higher than where I am now. And if Jason turns the camera 180 degrees, way off in the distance again, you can see the Gatineau Hills. So there's high hills, um, to both sides of me and I'm standing in a low spot in the Ottawa Valley. So today on this stop of our virtual field trip we're at Mud Lake. Mud Lake is just a little inlet off of the Ottawa River proper. As you can see it's home to a lot of wildlife. There's a bunch of geese that live here, tons of ducks, sometimes you see turtles. Um, it's a cool spot. There's also some rocks that are exposed on the shore of Mud Lake. And if these geese let us get a little closer, then we'll go take a better look at these rocks. So apparently these geese are pretty unconcerned that we're here. So we'll just take a closer look at the rocks with the geese standing on top of them. When you look at these rocks from the side, you can really see the horizontal layering in them. That should give you a clue as to what kinds of rocks they are. Um, so we can get a little bit better look. I'll collect a sample and bring it home to examine. So this is part two of our Mud Lake stop. We're here at this large glacial erratic. It's just beside Mud Lake. And this rock is very clearly not the same as the rock um, beside the lake, uh, or that's the bedrock here. This boulder has been transported a significant distance from where it originated. If we zoom in and take a closer look at the rock itself, there are some exposed surfaces that aren't covered in graffiti. And when we look at those, we can see that there's a ton of crystals visible. It's a bit hard to tell. So I'll see if I can take a smaller sample home to examine more closely. 